What's up everyone and welcome back to another quick market recap here at Trader Dynamics. Today I'm gonna discuss a little bit of crude oil, a little bit of the US economy in relation to the Fed, the stock market and in the end of course a little bit of crypto. So let's just jump right into the crude oil market and let me explain what happened here. So um, yeah at least just in a bit so as you can see on Sunday the crude oil market just gapped higher 7% and yeah closed at its highs basically so um, yeah pretty interesting to see that and yeah I mentioned also <clears throat> so if you look back a couple of episodes I want to see for this market to turn back bullish a close above this um, yeah pretty recent uh, range consolidation I also mentioned yeah I want to see a potential retest of the range bottom for a little short continuation back to the downside we did get that retest but there was no momentum follow-through so we did get a rejection and another rejection and then we marched back inside of this previous range here and then the market just gapped higher due to some news which I will cover in a bit and then we yeah, marched all the way back to the top of this range and then what is important now to see in the following uh, oh, or in the next week at least I want to see a close or <laughs> at least I don't want to see a close above this uh, yeah, previous consoli consolidation because that would mean probably higher gasoline prices and higher prices overall in the crude market but nevertheless if you are bullish in the crude market um, at least I personally I want to see a close above this previous consolidation so um, yeah we didn't really close that yet yeah we poked our head above it we did get any rejection above this previous consolidation so we need to see a, see a close especially a hold above this consolidation and then a continuation higher and then we know okay this market is at least um, in the short term here back bullish in the higher time frame so pretty decent move here um, yeah not to say the least it is knocking here at this uh, previous top here in, into these previous um, highs so yeah let's see what happens and what was the main driver here so what the heck happened uh, well it turns out that the oil cartel OPEC plus announced a pretty heavy oil production cut of more than 1 million barrels a day due to weaker global demand so um, yeah I'll have some more evidence showing that weakening in the US economy in a little bit but as you saw in the crude oil price yeah it jumped around yeah 8% into that previous top of the range now why is a surge in the crude oil price a problem especially in the present well this could elevate the inflation again which has been softening recently and yeah oil being a key driver of inflation data of course that is a of yeah a bit of a problem I'd say because that may um, yeah lead the Fed to act more aggressively again in the next FOMC meetings and maybe potentially if that inflation jumps back up again maybe to turn back um, yeah the hiking cycle on and uh, we'll see how that develops in the near future but this would inject a little bit more trouble since the Fed's efforts were already showing the first sign of or first signs of success in inducing an economic crisis in the US so as you can see for example here we had the ISM manufacturing PMI so that is some um, yeah, US some key US manufacturing data and as you can see it has been on a downtrend the last months um, in fact the last couple of years and it's now um, basically um, at its lowest level since almost or in almost three years so it has been shown uh, or the Fed's effort at least has been shown to have some effects in uh, smashing down the economy so uh, moreover if we move on to the labor market we are seeing some clear macroeconomic effects of yeah the latest interest rate hike by the fact so the jolts data showed on Tuesday that there were 9.9 uh, .9 million job vacancies available in the US in February and down from uh, 10.5 million in January and this is the first time the US job openings have fallen below the 10 million mark since May 2021 so pretty big in my opinion also big downtrend here and um, yeah we followed on from there on Wednesday then more uh, more evidence came out for a successful economic slowdown induced by the Fed's aggressive monetary policy stance 
with the private payrolls report. Um, they came out on Wednesday as mentioned and they showed a pretty significant jobs growth decline in March as well. And also the US non-manufacturing PMI data, also called the services PMI data, um, was taking a pretty strong hit as well compared to its um, expectations. So um, yeah, the question now is how did the US stock market react to all of that? And if we go or if we move on to the ES, you can see, uh, well, it took a little bit of a hit as well the last couple of days. So um, yeah, pretty big down candles here since Monday at least um, or yeah, since Tuesday to be uh, to be um, correct so let's see how that continues overall I mean we are still stuck in this big range just right here so we're retesting this yeah, left shoulder here let's see what happens here at this um, yeah left shoulder up here but um, for now we're seeing some supply here at least um, at this left shoulder so <clears throat> it remains to be seen do we get a retest now into the bottom of this range or a, in a potential continuation to the downside or do we crack that shoulder and crack that top of the range for a continuation to the upside it remains to be seen and we have some key macroeconomic data coming up today um, which I'll get to in the end but also next week so very very important data coming up which will dictate probably um, yeah the next move by the US stock market in the near future all right so yeah let's move on from here to crypto in fact and um, yeah to this guy so um, yeah big question now why am I showing you this guy's profile here so I'll give you a couple of seconds to find out starting now All right, <laughs> I'll give you the answer. So uh, if you look closely, you will find a little icon replacement here. So um, yeah, there's a little doge head. Basically, instead of the blue old bird that you know from Twitter, the new Twitter owner uh, named this guy, as you know by now, um, installed a dogecon head icon here. Um, and res in response basically to an earlier conversation with the um, yeah Wall Street uh, bets <laughs> chairman so um, yeah they were basically uh, chit chatting around having fun and uh, basically he promised that uh, or he, he, he promised to do that uh, that icon replacement and uh, yeah there it is um, <clears throat> I mean yeah if we if, if we scroll back down he's still making a little bit of fun uh, about that icon replacement so why do I tell you all of that well of course um, Dogecoin did see a little bit of a spike uh, due to that. So as you can see, a big spike here um, in the Dogecoin price. Now it's coming back to Earth here. Uh, obviously, this is not sustainable of a move. And um, yeah, who knows? I mean, now is Elon Musk back involved again in this or financially involved in this little spike? Um, well, <clears throat> we know that um, it wouldn't be the first time that he did that. As you may remember, um, a couple of years ago, um, this thing happened basically <clears throat> because yeah Elon Musk uh, did some uh, some li a little bit of market manipulation here at least according to the SEC so they accused Elon Musk of um, yeah, market money manipulation and pumping the doge price up here and um, yeah so it wouldn't be the first time and uh, of course this is an unregulated market if you're dealing with that you know what you're dealing with but yeah, let's see from a price perspective. I mean, it's not a big surprise that we are seeing some uh, support here at this um, 0.06678 level here. So basically this previous accumulation phase here um, coming down to this little range down here um, and getting basically yeah, rejected off that range. So <clears throat> I wouldn't be a buyer up here. Um, of course, so um, you're, you're dealing with trouble if you're doing that. But um, down here wouldn't have been a bad idea, of course. Everything in hindsight, of course. But finally, I personally would like to see a pushback above this level here. That's a key level for me. Um, but apart from that, I mean, yeah, to get putting uh, putting in some steps down here, not a, not the worst idea. I mean, now with these lower highs in place, I'd be a bit more careful. And um, yeah, there's there's no momentum follow through here. So let's see, maybe if Bitcoin um, gets its act together and breaks the top of its range, which we'll come to in a bit, um, maybe then it turns up the Doge price as well. So why don't we take a look at Bitcoin itself? 
And yeah, still stuck in this range I mentioned uh, earlier or a couple of episodes ago. At least last episode, I remember. So still stuck uh, at this top of the range, bottom of the range. I would argue wherever we um, yeah, break out of this range, I mean, that is the direction of this market in the short term. So if we break above here and break higher here, which is, in my opinion, the higher likelihood, if you let me guess, of course. Uh, but uh, for now, we're still stuck in this middle of the range. There is no volatility in this market. I mentioned it yesterday in the pre-market preparation video. So no point in trading here. If you really want to force it, well, just wait for a... or. Again, just my opinion, just wait for a retest of the bottom of the range and see where it goes at least, um, yeah, hopefully into the top of the range or higher. Uh, I wouldn't short the top of the range in my opinion because um, this market has been trending higher the last couple of weeks. So, or, yeah, or last couple of days at least. So, um, but yeah, again, still stuck in this range. I mean, the best thing to do in my opinion is just wait for this to resolve itself. And then wherever this breaks out, um, yeah, join the other side of that. And hopefully we get a, a break above this top of the range. And then it's moon time, hopefully. Or, yeah, as mentioned, I mean, not a bad idea where you can frame your risk down here into this bottom of the range for a potential move back to the upside or over over the top of the range in a break above and a co continuation back to the upside. So, yeah. That is it from Bitcoin. Unfortunately, not to, to say too much. Again, as mentioned, no volatility. But I guess it should pick up at least today or next week. So let's take a look at today's ma macro data. Um, I pointed out yesterday that there is a holiday today. It's Good Friday. But still, nevertheless, we have some key economic data coming out today at 8 30 a.m. So watch out for that. Um, the markets, the futures markets are open, I think, until 8.15 central time. So um, you should get a little bit of a volatility injection and then the markets are going to be closed. So, um, but apart from that, I would be very careful trading today because it is probably a low liquid environment. Um, many institutions are not in the office. Um, there is a bank holiday, yeah, of course, in Great Britain, in Europe or here, at least in Germany. So. Um, yeah, and probably big institutions over here, over here in Europe are not there. But nevertheless, big economic data, non-farm payrolls. So watch out for that, and watch out. Um, yeah, if you are trading, definitely keep your stops and everything protected. And um, yeah, of course, m make sure that you close your positions out before 8:15 Central Time, um, and double check that time. But uh, of course, but I think it was 8:15, so uh, I won't be there. Of course, <laughs> I'm gonna take my time off. Um, and enjoy my Easter holidays. But apart from that, yeah, let's take a look at next week. Next week is going to be big. Why is that? Well, we have big CPI data coming out of the US on Wednesday. Apart from that, we have the FOMC meeting minutes. So uh, definitely keep an eye out of tho on those. There should be some interesting things uh, released in that report. So um, yeah, watch out for that as well. Then on Thursday, we have the GDP data coming out of the UK. Then we have the um, yeah, PPI coming up um, and the uh, weekly jobless claims. So um, key economic data as well. And finally, we round it up with retail sales and consumer sentiment uh, data out of the US and um, inflation expectations as well. So, so it should be a relatively volatile week next week. Um, it should be a relatively volatile day today due to those um, illiquid market conditions because nobody's there, but probably the algos are going to be trading. So um, yeah, so watch out again and um, yeah, manage your risk, of course. And next week, I think it's going to be a lot more fun than uh, than today, <laughs> I hope I, I'd say. And uh, yeah, again, uh, speaking of next week, I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy Easter, everybody. Enjoy the time with friends and family and catch you all next week. All right, I'm out of here. Bye, everybody.